right, so we're ending all of our interviews with five sort of random questions. So top of the dome, fun questions. Here we go. What comic, and you can't say one of your own, should everybody be reading? Oof. I would say Justice League Dark. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Scott already mentioned this, and I shouldn't say this in front of a DC logo, but House of X and Powers of Ten are, like, doing incredible, incredible things. And I'm going to say something is killing the children. <laughs> you are a good friend and a good shill, my friend. <laughs> Not apparently. Read anything by any of our friends, because our friends are the best friends in the world. Yeah, follow me on Twitter, and then I'll just, and then just, yeah, I'll just, just tweet just... out everybody's books all the time. <laughs> yeah, and, you know... Um, that's no, really I'm hard because there's. I'm like literally. I've got like 30 things in my head right now that are like, all these books are amazing. It really. It, it's a really really interesting time in comics right now because it's like, all those books that were sort of you know the standard superhero fare that when we read was a kid, right. and you kind of read them just because you really like that character. Right. Like that's still going on, which is great. But at the same time, you have all these creators coming out like like with Bad Luck Chuck and Leela is like. Here's my really interesting, quirky, like, idea for what a cool comic could be. Like, and so many people are doing those kinds of books now, those kind of, like, personal books. Like, go read one of those. Just yeah. find somebody's personal book that, like, doesn't fit in necessarily with, with what's going on anywhere else in the market. Right. And just read that, because, like... And Somebody it, spent years thinking about that book. Right. And, and dreaming it, of the day of doing that book. It's so it cool, because right now... So many of the publishers are, like, making these books. And Dark Horse is really kind of just stepping up to, like, hey, we're going to make weird books. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, come be weird with us. <laughs> Boss. No joke. Really? Mm. It's great. And wow, we three. you're really throwing them out. And we three. Um, I think... Anyone should probably read. I would recommend EC Comics to anybody. Like a like like Judgment Day, like I think is like a, a super powerful piece. Still, and Divinity. They should read Divinity. Yeah. it's also a great book. Yeah. I'm gonna keep going. Can't go wrong with One Punch Man. It's one of the best. Uh, I mean, it's secretly the best superhero comic being made in the world right now. Sorry, everyone else, but uh, that's a fantastic book. Um, I really, really loved um, Darcy Von Polgis and Ian Bertram's Little Bird, which is, um, I think it just wrapped um, uh, dystopian sci-fi comic from, from Image Comics. Beautiful, beautiful work. And then, let me give one more shout out to... No, honestly, those two. Uh, uh, Wonder Twins by uh, Mark Russell is such a great book. I, I hate him. I really, he, he uh, between the Flintstones and, and Snagglepuss and now Wonder Twins, he's at the, t and I see him all the time and I just want to punch him in the face. Oh man, I don't know if people are overlooking or not, but like I definitely have been obsessing with Coda from uh, Boom Studios right now. Like the art on the right and it's just, it's so everything that I love that that's the one and again it's not it's, it, I don't know if they're overlooking it or not but that's the one that I spend, I've been obsessing and uh, so it's a really good book I've also been going a lot through manga lately like old stuff that I should have read so I'm reading 20th Century Voice right now which is well, that's, I like oh that man that's good that's really good can't I, go wrong with no 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 you cannot so yeah I don't know those those are the things that I'm obsessing Excellent. you know I've been obsessing with lately oh, I really loved uh, Alex Pecknadel's uh, Friendo series with Vault I thought that was fantastic. Also, Jeff Loveness's uh, series, uh, Judas, I thought was just brilliant. Uh, there's so many, but those are two that just really stood out for me last year. Okay, this, is a, this is a terrible answer because everybody is reading it, but House of X and Powers of X are the first comic in a long time that has become like a religious appointment for me. Like, I have to read it the moment it comes out. And so, yeah, I just, I think anyone that hasn't Clued into me, it yet. maybe Isola by Brendan Fletcher and Carl Kershaw, and um, uh, that's just a thing of beauty. That book is just the artwork by Michelle and Carl. Just, it's just like utterly gorgeous. Uh, and Brendan Fletcher is one of my favourite writers as well. Uh, and maybe Middle West. I'm reading that at the moment by Scott Young. That's just so good it's really like gets the like hits you in the heart and the artwork on that is just utterly beautiful i can't remember the name of the artist i'm so sorry but uh yeah i buy that book mainly for the art as well but, uh, yeah. 
Um, I'm really enjoying a lot of um, <coughs> Mark Russell's work, including the Wonder Twins and uh, Red Sonia too, which is, I think, that one I think is really flying under the radar a bit, and it's quite, it's quite interesting. It's, it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of world building going on under the surface. I'm, I'm gonna jump in again. Yeah. I'm gonna jump in again. I'm gonna say uh, these Savage Shores. If you haven't checked it out, uh, Ram V, Sumit Kumar. Uh, it, it is uh, Vittorio Stone, uh, Aditya Bidikar on letters. It's absolutely a masterpiece. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. That's that's a great one. Um, uh, Money Shot is coming out next month, I believe. Yes. November. Yeah, Money Shop from uh, uh, Tim Seeley uh, is writing it, and uh, art is uh, Rebecca, Rebecca Isaacs. Isaacs, yeah, uh, who she's wonderful. Um, and that that book is um, hilarious, and I think it's the kind of I think it's the kind of book that comics needs. I think it's a book that's like it, it's just it, it sort of fits in the one of my books, Waste of Space Wheelhouse, where it's like it has it's irreverent. It's not a, it's not afraid to just be. To go a little bit beyond the line, a little bit in, in a in a comfortable, friendly way, and, and it's it's it's, but it's also is a, is a giant beating heart. That book, it's a book about the what is it? It's about the adult <laughs> enter, entertainment industry in space. It's crazy. It's hilarious. It's hilarious and so tender and warm. And it's I I think it's I'm a huge fan. Tim is one of my best friends. I'm a huge fan of his work. But I think this is potentially one of his best which is saying a lot I just read an incredibly great comic that I think everyone should read it's called They Called Us Enemy George Takei wrote a memoir of his family his Japanese family obviously being placed into what we now know as the Japanese internment camps during World War II and uh, really wonderfully uh, adapted by his co-writers uh, Justin Isinger and Stephen Scott, if I have that correct, beautifully illustrated by a woman whose name I'm not quite remembering. Uh, her, I'm blanking on her name, and I reviewed yes, that graphic yes, novel. Yes. It's um, yes, you reviewed it as well. It's really um, something pretty incredible about politics, social change, social trends, how politics matters. Some people don't think politics matters. Well, now, with what we're dealing with now, it matters more than ever. The rights of people can easily be trampled on by the current administration and perhaps future administrations. This is a graphic novel. It is called They Called Us Enemy. And it is written by George Takei of Star Trek fame, obviously. Everyone should go out and seek it. It is in paperback. It is in hardcover. And it is available digitally. I read it on Comixology, actually. Uh, that's a very socially important comic. Also, I want to plug... The comics work of a writer and artist named Noah Van Syver. Noah Van Syver is an indie comics guy. He writes and draws autobio stuff. He writes and draws uh, history comics. Really incredible. He is related to Ethan Van Syver, but he does not share the views in any way of his brother. He has he has kept very, himself very separate from that. He has been making comics in the trenches for 15 or 20 years. And he's like, he's essentially like another Harvey Picar or Dean Haspiel. He's a very nice guy. His work is phenomenal. And I, I suggest people go out and see. You know, I think there's a lot of amazing stuff being done, mostly in the world of the graphic novel. Um, as a reader, I bounce around a lot on the serial comics. I'm very interested and curious to see what Brian Bendis is doing with the Legion characters that I lived with for so many years. At this point, I've seen about two pages of it. Looks like it's going to be fun. Justice League Dark. Yeah. I like James Tynan a lot. He's a good friend of mine. It's really good. It's a very good book. It's a very good book. The last arc has been phenomenal. James is great. James is great. He's a terrific writer, and he's really putting a lot of heart into that book. I mean, Powers of X, House of X is incredible. Yeah, it's, like really new. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I mean, that's it's like great. a complete reinvention. But like, if you were, I would want to say like an indie book because there's so many good indie books out there. Uh, Which one then? I go. You can I say everything and oh, get away yeah, with it. <laughs> everything. Ice cream man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay. we're covered. All also, right. I would say. Uh, there's only been a few issues of it. No, there's only been one issue of it, but there was one that was really striking. It's called Something That's Something Is Killing the Children. Oh, by James Tynion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know, I'm very much looking forward to issue two of that. Yeah. Uh, I also read a Little Bird. 
from Image Comics, and I think it's really good too. Yeah. Also, uh, five issues of White Trees. It's already done. Or no, is it White Tree? White Trees or White Tree? Warren Ellis. No. Or, or uh, um, the Chris oh, no, no, Ghost Tree. Sorry, it's uh. Ghost Tree. Um, it came and came and went. Beautiful, but they did a few printings of it. Um, I cannot remember the artist or the author's name, which is a shame. But uh, yeah, it's a, a kid who used to go to his grandfather's house, and and there was a tree that his grandfather liked to hang around. And then as a grown man, he goes back and realizes that like spirits of ancestors hang around that tree, and that like the whole story is very kind of personal and family and. It's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. I think it was published by IDW. It was. That's right. Yes. It's great. Um, I'm going to say, just popped straight into my head, uh, The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. I have to say, my all-time favorite comic book story, Amazing Spider-Man 248, The Kid Who Collects Spider-Man. It is a fantastic story written by Roger Stern, drawn by Ron Friends, a very powerful, emotional story. It's just a half story. First half is this action story, Spider-Man versus Thunderball, drawn by... John Romita Jr., it's great, but the second story, The Kid Who Collects Spider-Man, gutted me as a, as a teenager. And I was so surprised by the ending, it moved me in a way I'd never been moved by a, a, a single comic book. That's the one I would say. I love that comic uh, story. Snapdragon, uh, that's going to be coming out uh, next year by first second, and it's by Cat Lay. Yes. Um, also from for a second, Tilly Walden's Are You Listening, which just came out, which is like YA Miyazaki road trip trauma recovery. It's so good. Her art is fantastic. There's a cat also, if you like that sort of thing. Who doesn't like a cat? I mean, I'm allergic, so I like, I like the cat better. I like the cat better in print. Oh, oh we're, th we're throwing shade over here. Okay, we'll leave that alone.